All right, so we do appear to have some breaking news here, and it is that Glenn Greenwald, who founded The Intercept, um, and I believe had his rise from being essentially the vehicle for the Snowden leaks, uh, has resigned from The Intercept. This is a huge deal. So he's posted his article to a website called Substack. I know that uh, David Sirota writes his articles on Substack as well. Um, I think it's just a place where you can just have someone subscribe to you and read your articles. Now I'm going to read you the tweet that he sent out in his announcement. He says, My resignation from The Intercept. The same trends of repression, censorship, and ideological homogeneity plaguing the national press generally have engulfed the media outlet I co-founded, culminating in the censorship of my own articles. He then says, The final precipitating cause is that The Intercept's editor censored an article I wrote this week, refusing to publish it unless I remove all sections critical of Joe Biden, the candidate vehemently supported by all Intercept editors involved in this effort at suppression. But the pathologies, illiberalism, and repressive mentality that led to the bizarre spectacle of my being censored by my own media, media outlet are ones that are not unique to The Intercept. I'll be doing my journalism at Substack for now. Subscribe here. Um, and then he basically puts out some other stuff, but he says, here's the article that I wrote about Joe Biden's conduct in Ukraine and China, based on Hunter's emails and other witness testimony, along with the critique of media lies designed to protect the Democratic candidate, which The Intercept refused to publish. And so it appears to me that this is essentially the key uh, issue that uh, had sort of wedged them apart is there has been the censorship of the story about Hunter's, uh, Hunter Biden's emails, his laptop, all of this stuff. It has actually been getting censored by social media outlets, which is, you know, I'd say it is kind of iffy, you know, censoring it based on ideology does seem to be kind of risky, I would say, especially given certain things like Snowden leaks and stuff like that. Um, so I think for him, it was obviously really a principal issue here. And uh, it is very obvious that what Hunter Biden did with Ukraine and China, Burisma, it was incredibly shady. Um, he super obviously only got that high paying job because his father was the vice president. And obviously they were trying to butter him up to basically get what they want. Um, Hunter Biden had no expertise or any of that in energy. And this story actually would have meant more to people had uh, COVID not been the dominating issue. Right now, people are concerned with, you know, the 200 plus thousand people who have died because of coronavirus, not being able to go to malls without wearing a mask, not being able to have parties, have it, not being able to dine in at restaurants, all of this, not being able to go to concerts, sporting events, all of these kinds of things. These are vital to the American way of life, right? And uh, people are worried, are really concerned about that because that's what affects them at the most surface level, right? At the most forefront level. So had coronavirus not been the dominating issue, I think like in 2016 with the email scandal, the Clinton Foundation, all of the you know copious amounts of corruption that plagued Hillary Clinton would have been a really big deal for Joe Biden in 2020. But this race is simply dominated by coronavirus, and rightfully so. Um, and so nobody cares. And so what Trump doesn't seem to understand is, and a, and a lot of people, in different elections, different issues mean more. So as of right now, this does not really mean anything. The Hunter Biden situation, nobody really cares. And the reason why nobody really cares about the Hunter Biden situation is because of coronavirus. And it's pretty crazy to see Glenn Greenwald stepping down from The Intercept. It was his own, you know, media outlet that he founded. Um, not only that, we've seen this a couple of times with some progressives. Uh, we've seen Kyle Kalinske of Secular Talk uh, resigning, as well as Jane Huger of The Young Turks resigning from the Justice Democrats, if you recall. And that was a, w a while ago. So this kind of thing seems to happen quite often. The Intercept, I thought, was actually doing some really good work. I really liked their write-ups because they would have these really good, um, they would have these really good explanations on, you know, what went down in this congressional hearing, or you know, how did these people vote? Here's the progressive upcoming. You know, there was a lot of good work that I liked on the Intercept that was really good. Um, but I think this is an issue that's been going on for a while. So uh, I guess Glenn, Glenn Greenwald has decided to actually fully resign and step down from The Intercept. 
So, you know, let me know your thoughts on this down below. Definitely sad to see, but um, not really sure where they're going to go from here.